Okay, the title for the next talk is Conti Leaks and Carver Analysis for Threat Intel Analysis. And um, please welcome our speaker, Will Baggett. Over to you. Hey, thank you for coming to the talk. I appreciate it. Uh, these talks are truncated from 55 minutes down to 20. So like Matt Foley, I've been in my basement drinking three pots of coffee for the past few hours, and I live in a van down by the river, and I wanna speed through this. So compromise Conti chats and Carver methodology. First, I'm Will Baggett, uh, CCEE certified combat collection engineer for my Venado soft days, certified fraud examiner, a whole bunch of digital forensics certifications. Started off working uh, Financial technology was a coder developer, took that off my resume because open floor plans and coding don't work. Um, went to CIA for oh, 20 years, did some stuff, did some things. Met someone at another conference, we were just talking about networking, ended up getting a job for a couple of years over in Belgium as NATO cybersecurity instructor for the special operations troops there, which ties into this. Uh, worked digital forensics in, uh, insider threat for a large consulting firm with a company that may or may not have produced vaccines. I can't name them, but you know who they are. And from that, I pivoted over to uh, cyber threat intelligence, where I am now. And since they're not paying for the talk, they're not paying for me to be here, I don't have to get legal involved, so I'm not naming them. So we're gonna cover a few things. We're gonna talk about the Conti Ransomware Group. We're gonna talk about the Carver methodology, the insider threat overview, and then how well, the Russia-Ukraine situation, some of the games they play with each other. The slides are color-coded a little bit. If it's a red slide, if I had a week long with you and this is a NATO classroom, we'd pivot, we'd do online training, we'd actually get some hands-on. The yellow slides are things that were discovered after the fact for this leak, months or you know, 18 months later, which is relevant, but it didn't impact what we did when the leak came in. So. It besides, you know, you can have someone coming straight into cybersecurity who's never worked in the field or looking to transition out of what they're doing, or you might have someone who's legendary like Jack Daniel who helped build the internet down to the ones and zeros for the routers, everything. So we'll start high level. Ransomware is basically malware that locks up your computer and for a very small fee of money with six figures, seven figures, they'll give your data back. Another Variant of that that we've seen now, the Russian conflict is wiperware where same methodology, but instead of locking your data up, it just wipes it. It's like an EMP, electromagnetic pulse vehicle or a bomb that wipes it out, but it's a little more efficient, a little cleaner. It's cyber warfare. It is what it is. So Conti is a Russian ransomware group. They were first spotted in May 2020. They'll do data extraction first, exfiltration. They'll name the company. Uh, like, I think it was Uber that was hit today by Klopp. And they'll shame, them. oh, they've been hit, we have their data, we can sell on the dark web if they don't pay us this amount of money to pressure the company to give up the information. One of the things that came out was they are a fundraising arm for the Russian government, and it's not a small business. Conti was, was past tense, the leader in ransomware, $180 million in, was it 2021? And that's not chump change for a criminal organization. Their standard methodology, they'll, te they'll harvest credentials through spear phishing, whatever else, they'll get the credentials, penetrate the organization, make sure it's a valid account, and then they'll spear fish. This is also mapped out very well by so many other researchers. The malware comes in, they get the back door, they connect to their C2 command and, con command and control server. They exfil the data, they give the command to lock it up. Once they're available, they have consultants to tell the company how much money they can possibly ask for for a uh, ransom that's reasonable. And also they'll target the insurance policy. So if you have something like an Aon cyber insurance policy, they've got the data, they know where your policy limit is, the last for that top dollar policy limit, just like a car mechanic. Oh, your insurance is going to cover $50,000 for this repair to your Jeep. The bill is $50,000. Same thing, but with ransomware. All that said, May 2021, the Colonial Pipeline leak, any of the East Coast people in here are impacted by that? Few people. Long story short, and we don't need editorial, 
They weren't hiring for their cyber, open cybersecurity positions. They were hit by dark side with ransomware, locked up the payment system. So Colonial Pipeline went dark for about a week, seriously impacted the East Coast. All it took was just one phishing email to get past the defenses to load the malware. All that said, I know I'm going fast, but we have a lot of material to cover. A couple of cool things that came out teaching over in NATO SOF of, for the troops. And it's a whole coalition, which is bizarre to have the former Soviet bloc troops in a skiff. They're now our allies. Whereas before I couldn't talk to you socially, but now you're one of us, you're in the skiff, I'm teaching you. It's bizarre. So a couple of cool things that came out. Cool as in, I respect the technique, I don't like the conflict, but long story short, Ukrainian troops landed in near the border. Russia owned the cell tower, whether they penetrated it, whether they owned it, whether it's a fake, fake cell phone tower like a stingray, I don't know. All the MZ data was gathered, the phones come up, they hit the network, the Russians collect the data, they find out who you are, who your family is, they send a text to you that you're going to be shelled. They send a text to your family, your son or your daughter is going to be killed in the next 30 minutes if they don't move. The parents call the kids, they text the kids, they geolocate where the troops are. It's electronic warfare, it's SIGINT, it's psychological operations. Again, no one was killed with this, but it's an absolutely brilliant tactic in tw the 21st century. So that was something innovative. The big takeaway there, the TLDR is, don't take your personal cell phone into combat. That's, you'd be surprised. Uh, there was another slide for cut for brevity. Ukrainian researchers would have fake Tinder profiles to do social media elicitation on Russia to find out troop movements, morale, things like that. And uh, one of the things that led up to the conflict, Ukraine released a list of roughly 600 KGB, SFB, or SVR officers to the world. Here's their name, phone number, all the personal information of them. Whether or not they're actually KGB, I don't know. They could actually be the third undersecretary of commerce for Russia working in Kiev, doing nothing with espionage. However, they've been named in this. So now your name, the locals don't want to deal with you because you could be a hostile. So this effectively neutralized the Russian intelligence collection up over there. This word for Will? Nice blank operation. Who's this from? This is what this is your for your request. Comrade, no. <laughs> Dubrovinsky. It's actually good. Okay, so the red slides are where we would pivot and stop and do a couple hours of exercise. We're not doing that here because we don't have the infrastructure. Bellingcat, other OSINT researchers found where KGB officers would go to other countries, execute dissidents, murder them, return back, and they would have, oh, it's on YouTube. It was terrible trade craft. They're identified. We could go through that leak and find who they were. The soldiers would dig into this to find the operations that were leaked, where it would branch out, find out who's going to Siberia for poor trade craft. We don't have time for that here, but that's where we would pivot and go. And a lot of Ukrainians are saying, I'm telling you right now, that Muscovite Foreign Service officer, he is not, he is not real. <laughs> okay, so I'm working now, cyber threat intelligence, large infrastructure provider, you know who they are, can't say them legally. But we're concerned that if we're hit with this, leadership's concerned, CISA's concerned, NSA's concerned that if we're hit, a lot of corporations are hit, it's gonna majorly impact the US economy. So as the CISA likes to say, we have our shields up for this. Conti sends a message saying, we are fully behind Russia. We support Russia, hundo P, no cap, for real, for real. Yeah, my son just cringed at that one. And then, oh, we don't really support Russia two hours later. Well, we'll support ourselves. They're backpedaling. Well, that was kind of vague and unconvincing. The internal researcher, who's a Ukrainian working with Russia, a couple of days after that announcement, sends out an email to Bleeping Computer, if you're cyber threat intelligence, basically that's where all of your data comes from, saying, hey, I'm going to leak all this data. It's going to come out the next few days. Here's this unique file name. It's going to come out, and you're going to like it. First and foremost, like Clint Eastwood said in The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, 
If you're going to talk, talk. If you're going to shoot, shoot. You don't do that. So he leaked out six, 60,000 messages, several gigabytes of data. Again, we would pivot here and go from who's following this account, who opened the account, who's bookmarking this, and who's quoting. That's going to give a lot of information of cyber threat intelligence because the average person's not interested in this. The leaks start coming out. And as you know, this violates Twitter terms of contract or X's terms of contract of what data is actually available. English version comes out. I don't know how long it's going to be up. We're doing shift rotations. I'm former CSA, uh, CIA. My manager is former NSA White House comms. It's a heavily military intelligence group themed background group. So we understand we've got to work shifts in this. This is not nine to five day work the first few months, it was fun. No, it wasn't fun. So all total, this is what came out. Everything. And when they said they weren't actually working with Russia, the results determined that that was a lie. There are links, this came out last, oh wow, time flies, last month of what was actually there. Very quickly, because we have about nine minutes left, the insider threat, usually, if you think of the data leak with a dam holding it down, a breach is when the dam breaks data comes forward. It's usually an external actor, something like a solar winds, cloud misconfiguration, an insider threat, someone like Edward Snowden, Robert Hansen giving, leaking out sensitive data to hostile people, Nebula bringing the ship in from wherever Thanos was. And people do use science fiction as a reference because that's not copyright, it's not an NDA. So we can go to that as a common ground. So people don't expect this to leak when you've got a breach like CLOP and move it, organizations are still being hit with this, finding the weaknesses, just like the shield at Scarif was. Now your traditional motives for espionage, mice, money, ideal, ideology, conscience, compromise, or ego or excitement. So this definitely hit ideology, conscience, and probably a little bit of ego. If I leak this, I can take down the Russian fundraising machine. The other is rascals, which is exactly what the email phishing does. So we have an insider threat. This is a one-time event. He's lost his access. It's directly attributable to the only Ukrainian on there. The damage is unquantifiable, at least 180 a year. They were up to 180 million a year before the leak. Again, going back to the class method, we would discuss how they stage the data for exfiltration. We would look at how you could determine it. They use his corporate laptop. Does he get a corporate laptop? There's a lot of questions to answer. But this is raw data that comes in from a battlefield, even though it's not traditional finding a USB drive in a uh, sensitive site exploitation, it's still data from a conflict that leaked to the corporate world. We have to determine if it's, uh, what the impact is, if it's disinformation, if it's manipulation, or if it's actually true good data we can ingest. So who was Conti? They're gone now. We haven't seen anything on Conti. They've been relabeled to other things. The methodology I, I used once I had the data was the Carver method. It's from OSS Office of Special Services in uh, World War II. It's what we taught the French how to identify the key points for subtle sabotage. With the longer method, I might be able to, longer time I could talk about some of that, but given this is on YouTube and it's teaching people how to do sabotage, probably not something I should teach out for the world. But this is offense or defense to find the weak point. So you got criticality, accessibility, recoverability, vulnerability, effect, and recognizability. But out of that, you look for the key piece, just like the meme of the one Excel spreadsheet supporting the world's finance system. This leaker knew exactly the key thing to take out Conti. Just like air conditioning runs B-sides and DEF CON. Air conditioning goes out, no one's sticking around for these talks, same at DEF CON, because God, the smell. But for our purposes, with that methodology, criticality and effect, if these two things go down, what would happen? So just like the Battle of Scarif, if the shield goes down, they're not expecting the rebel fleet to actually physically ram something that's an out-of-band technique that hadn't been done before per Star Wars lore. That's the key weakness for the Empire. So we've got a chart, and we go through and rate what's the most important thing. So the scale of one to five, highest score is going to be 30, lowest score is going to be six. The most important is their source code 
their core designers, and some of the infrastructure credentials are you know, a dime a dozen. The staff, they can always get more staff, but the core developers, that's their weakness. Our weakness are crown jewels, all the financial information that we hold, the personal information, the way we handle it, our infrastructure, the way we process what we do, and our reputation. If we lose our reputation, it's a major part of the U.S. economy, and I think the kids would say it'd be shook. But that's how we lined it up. But very quickly, we knew this is what Conti's coming after. Emails, databases, source code, inf uh, insurance. There's a screenshot. Given this is a lot of leaked personal information, I'll share what I can. They're going for the banking information. How do we define it as CIA? It was foreign of interest, new clandestinely acquired and authoritative in the cyber threat intelligence financial world. Is it financial industry? Is it of interest? Is it new? Is it copied and pasted from bleeping computer? And is it authoritative? So we've got to look at the security, the time, the imminent threat. What's happening with this data? It's been leaked. We have all these creds out there. We're not going to go online and search because this is a traditional honeypot. You wouldn't put your information in one of these. You wouldn't search on the dark web. This is a common methodology criminal actors use to get the core information of what's of interest. You tell me what you're looking for, I'll tell you if I've got it. It's never found, but they're building that back in database. So the core of it is, are we targeted? Our core business functions, the, then there's leak creds, and then the CDE, IOC, TTPs. And out of that, that comes down to, this came out last week, roughly 87% of ransomware attacks, phishing attacks, are because of compromised creds. So using this method, I know that if I can find, going to like goes after like, if I can find, if my company's targeted, our core business function is targeted, first and foremost, if we can find there's creds in there that are leaked, then I know what to disable, what to turn off, and that's gonna lower our risk vector. A lot of credentials out there, I can show you this. That's what it looks like. It's redacted. It's redacted. There's a lot of strong passwords. They hit password managers. It's shared in clear text. It's leaked in clear text. And just adding a one at the end still isn't secure. So the Conti operator, they work off phishing, vulnerabilities, creds, and spear phishing is an inside threat to get their C2 up there. That's the methodology. Yes, this is a diamond model. I freaking wanted to use that S that you've drawn since elementary school for the first time in my career. So there it is, that's your diamond model. So importing the data, I didn't do this on my corporate network because I like having a job. I don't know what Conti has in their chat. I can almost 100% guarantee it's going to get me fired if the right filter hit it. I did it out of band, made copies, made backups, sort through it to see if we were listed. First and foremost, are we hit? Reports go up saying, we use this method. We're not listed, we're not hit. Here's the credentials. The next key thing for the other 12%, not only do they document the vulnerabilities going back to 2015, they list this company is vulnerable to the CVE. Here's exactly how to do it step by step. So it's not a, oh, let's wait for vulnerability management to repatch this months later. This is Okay, A doesn't work, they immediately pivot to B, the speed of ransomware versus the speed of business. Now the tertiary analysis as we're starting to wrap up, there's a lot of stuff we can find here. The after action threats, we can find how to reverse engineer this. We can pivot on established usernames for OSINT, look for the leaked Bitcoin wallets using uh, OSINTframework.com, some phone links there. But immediately, is my organization at risk? Are we being hit? And if I've got that 88% coverage, 87%, 89% coverage, then the rest of it takes a lot of the pressure off. There's tertiary analysis that's great for incident response, it's great for the tech teams, how they launch their domain controllers, but the immediate, are we at risk? This is great, but if I don't have the door locked of managing my elite credentials because that's the first thing I sorted through, it doesn't matter. You can see this came out last week, they go for insurance programs for insurance coverage. VX Underground, a year and a few months after the fact, all this is out there, it's fantastic. But back in February of 2022, my concern for my organization is I've made sure this leak isn't, Rush is not targeting our financial infrastructure. So the TLDR, secure your own organization first, document everything as you find it, just like everything else. The carbon methodology, it's not a 
there is a software program, but it's the mindset because tools break, tools change prices, you lose vendors. Look at in case with digital forensics. They used to be the king of forensics, now they're gone. So as we're wrapping up, if Conti can take care of their own ransomware operators, take a vacation holiday for yourself, then you need to take one for your team. And the next steps, I'm going to go back to the room, change clothes, and start looking for is Conti affecting the U.S. election? Because no one else has done this. I'm not going to assume it's been covered. I'll take care of this myself. And I think we're right on time. So. Caffeine. I think we can do like one, one or two questions. You, you blitzed through that. Is there a longer version that's recorded somewhere that is posted? Because that's awesome, but I would love to sit through the 55 minute version of that. It's that with more examples, slower talking, and I don't sound like the guy from the Micro Machines commercials from the 80s. But is it posted somewhere? Is it what? Is it posted somewhere? Not yet. The talks will be on YouTube and um, yeah, here we go. My email is 10x at engineer.com. Yeah, like if you go to mail.com, they got like 200 domains. So when you apply for a job, it's something unique, like at consultant instead of at Gmail, you stand a little bit better and it's free. Any other questions? So is th that data set available? Yes. To everybody? Yeah. And so you're, are, you're sort of advocating like, hey, it's a good idea for you to go to check to see if you're on this list. If you're- Would it hurt? Yeah, yeah thanks, I, mean, I was just kind of, okay. I mean, I, no, 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 I, I, yeah. I just wanna like read being, the tea leaves a little bit, yeah. Yeah, you know, kind of over caffeinated this morning thinking, I haven't searched that data set for the other thing I'm working on. No. No one else in this group has. Why not? Yeah. Excellent. Thanks for the help. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Will. That was great. Thank, Thank you. you.